Well, hello, boys and girls. It's your favorite internet tutorial guy friend who opens his eyes because he always gets flamed for it. Nadine Sands here for another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. On my last DaVinci Resolve video, I got a lot of questions from you guys about how to get it out of Premiere into DaVinci and then back into Premiere again. So today is the DaVinci Resolve installment tutorial part D, and we're going to be going over workflow from Premiere to DaVinci and then back into Premiere so that you guys can get everything looking very pretty. Going to be shooting in 4K today, which is exciting. Make sure you turn that quality up to 4K. K if you haven't done it already because DaVinci Resolve 14 free version you can export up to 3840 by 2160 resolution which is UHD format before in the old versions of DaVinci they capped you out at 1080 which sucks but in this free version in 14 you can export up to 4k 4k UHD it's not true 4k it's almost 4k but that's huge well I think now it's time to go grab some 4k video assets so I'm gonna go to Taco Bell but not to get some tacos for the sake of this video to get footage of course idiots can't take this, no more. this place is amazing but it's closed not a shame Welcome to the after party, baby. All right, now that we've got our footage, we're gonna get it into Premiere, and then we're gonna export it to DaVinci. I did it for cinema, not because I like Taco Bell. So, in this sequence of shots, I shot a little bit of 4K and a little bit of 1080. Now, I've just dropped my 1080 clips down onto my 4K timeline, and they come in really small. I get this question all the time. What if I'm working with 720 footage and 1080 footage, but the drone is 4K and all this other stuff? Okay, so you need to figure out, A, what are you gonna export at at the very end of this? Are you gonna try to export in 4K or does the client or whoever only need it at 1080? So first you have to make that determination. And two, what size is most of your footage? If 95% of your footage is in 1080 and 5% of it is in 4K, why would you ever wanna export at 4K when 95% of your footage is gonna have to be upscaled to 4K and it's gonna look a lot worse? So you gotta have to see what most of your footage is in and then I would just base off what your final export size is gonna be based off of how much footage you actually have of that size. So for this one specifically, I have more 4K than I do 1080, but in the round trip from DaVinci, I'm just gonna leave it this small. We don't actually have to touch it and I will show you why once we get it into DaVinci. So once you have everything down in your timeline and it's edited all nice, you're gonna come up to File, Export, and go to Final Cut Pro XML. Now I know that this is not Final Cut, it is Premiere, I get it. But that's what the, that is, I don't make the rules, I just follow them, okay? Just uh, click Final Cut Pro XML, it's gonna ask you where you want to save your project. So I'm gonna save this sequence under a folder I have called Color Grade, I'm gonna call this Source Raw. Click Save. It will export the XML and then that's it. So save your Premiere project. I recommend closing Premiere completely and opening DaVinci on its own. That way you're not sacrificing any CPU and it can go a little bit faster and then you're not gonna get it frustrated and then, okay. So DaVinci's open. You're gonna create a new project and you're gonna save that project of course. And we're gonna call this Taco Bell, yay. We're gonna come down to our media tab and we're just gonna come to file, import XML. And we're gonna click that and we're going to navigate to where we just saved our source file from Premiere and I'm gonna click open. Importing timeline from Premiere, if you named it, unlike me, it will say that name here and then what you wanna call it here. So I'll call this Taco Bell Grade. Automatically set project settings, automatically import source clips in the media pool and use sizing information. Our timeline resolution is set to 3840 by 2160. That's all good. I'm just gonna click okay. And it will throw us into the edit column. Very nicely, it has mirrored our Premiere timeline perfectly inside of DaVinci. And if you notice, our clips that were 1080 have actually come in at the source resolution of 3840 by 2160. So hurrah. So then we will come over to color and you will come and do all of your color grades. So I'm gonna do something super quick. There is no editing here at all. I okay, for now, this is a very quick and dirty grade. Hallelujah, we're just gonna leave it at that just for this example. And as you can see down here, I have a lot of clips that are gonna be based on this grade. Now I didn't cover this in my first DaVinci Resolve tutorial, but I'm gonna cover it here very quickly in the round trip workflow. When you're doing something like this and you grade one shot, check this out, right click on it and choose grab still. Now we'll put a still image over here. Now, what can you do with that? There's two things you can do with it. You can come over to the next clip and you can just click and drag right on top of the first node and it will build out all of the nodes that you previously just did in your shot right before that. Or you can come up here and drag this into A, B, C and these keep going down through all letters of the alphabet and that corresponds to your computer keyboard. So now if I come over here to this one that's not graded, I can hit Command or Control 1 on the keyboard and it will automatically grade the file 
based on the corresponding thing here. I know it's letters here, but ABC corresponds to one, two, and three. So I could put as many as I want here. And if you have like a two camera interview set up, you grade each angle individually, and then you can set it to one and two. And as you're going through, you can just go about, oh, one, oh, two, oh, one, two. And it just makes it super easy and super fast. I recommend trying that out. So we're just gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna hit my boom right there, boom right there. I'm gonna put the same grade on everything because I literally just don't care right now. You are going to spend much more time on this and you are not going to do it like me, but I'm doing it like me for the sake of this video and not being so long. Okay, fantastic. Now we are ready to export and there are two ways that you can get this out of DaVinci into Premiere. I am going to show you both because I am a gentleman. The first way I'm gonna call the easy way, right? Where you just Click on these all the way. You come up here to uh, custom render settings. We're gonna render a video as a single clip, Apple ProRes 422 HQ. Render it out in UHD 3840 by 2160 at 23976 frames per second. I'm going to make sure that we double check the file name, which currently says untitled. We're gonna change it to Taco Bell Clip. And now I'm gonna add to render queue and I'm just gonna click export. Okay, our render is complete, and now what I'm gonna do is open up Premiere again. And here we are, I'm back in my original timeline. I'm just going to import that clip now into Premiere. Taco Bell clip, there it is. Click on Import, and it will bring it in as one movie clip that has been graded via DaVinci. And what I can do is I can drag and drop that right on top of my clips. And as you will see, it actually resized this straight from DaVinci, so we don't have to resize them in Premiere. That's the original 1080 clip. We just resized it to UHD. And basically what it's done is just given me one clip that I can work with now. That's the easy way. If you have your project picture locked at this point, I would say that that's probably a pretty easy way to go about it, because then you can just drop it straight into Premiere. Everything is all well and good. You click export and then you're on your way. Now the harder way is the way that you probably should do it, and that's coming back out of DaVinci into Premiere using another XML, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So we are back in DaVinci. And right up here at the top where you chose custom the first time, we're gonna come right over here and just choose Premiere XML. And it will give you some different options down here. Let's start with video. And it's going to go QuickTime ProRes 422, which is what we want. Uh, you can click this render at source resolution or you can do 3040 by 2160. I'm just gonna click render at source resolution. And we're gonna come over to file. It is going to be using unique file names and we are going to tell it where to save right in here. We're gonna save it under color grade. I'm gonna click OK, and we are going to click Add to Render Queue and click Start Render. Okay, we have finished exporting or rendering or whatever you wanna call it out of DaVinci. I'm gonna pop back over into Premiere. I'm gonna delete this Taco Bell clip out of here and out of the project completely because that was the easy way. Now what I'm gonna do is come in here and I'm going to click Command or Control I for import. And as you can see now in our color grade folder, it has spit out individual clips that are all color graded with this little XML as well. So all I'm gonna do is click on the XML, I'm gonna click import, then Premiere is gonna do its own thing. It's gonna create a new folder for everything that we've just done. And I'm gonna come in here and there should be a sequence right here called Taco Bell Grade Resolve. Double click on that. And now we'll open the color graded timeline exactly mirrored basically to what we have in our original timeline, except the footage that was originally 1080 comes back in at 1080. Now, if you're a boss like me, you will have your set to frame size keyboard map. So mine is shift command or shift control W and that will set to frame size, or you can right click on your clip and you can go to set to frame size or scale to frame size. Now there is a difference between the two. Scale to frame size will basically rasterize your image at the resolution of your composition. So if I have a 4K clip on a 1080 timeline and I choose scale to frame size, it will rasterize it at 1080. Now, if I wanted to try to blow that image up again, you may get some pixelation and some image distortion because it's rasterizing it at the current timeline size. Set to frame size, however, it will take a 4K clip that's at 100%, and on a 1080 timeline, it will scale it down to 50%, giving you the room to play with if you wanted to punch in on the image or pull back. It won't pixelate and it won't distort the image. So there is a huge difference between the two. I recommend using set to frame size always. Don't ever use scale to frame size unless you're never planning on changing the resolution of your sequence ever. But just use set, just, just use set. And there you go. Now you kind of have the same problem with both versions, whether it's the long clip or short clips, is if I wanted to drag this out, 
I actually can't do that. I, I'm not able to extend the clip on either side because these are just rendered directly out of DaVinci. But there is a way to change that in DaVinci. We pop back over and you come down under your XML settings to video and you tool down the advanced settings tab. Down at the very, very bottom, there's a little menu that says add blank frame handles. And what that will do is it will add frames on each side of your clip and it will export those as well so that you can actually do what we were just trying to do. So if you wanted to add a full second onto either side, I would add 24 frames to each side of the thing. And then that way it'll allow you to pull one second in the other direction up to you if you want to do that. But ideally before you color grade, you are picture locked and you're not changing anything ever. Well, there you go, guys. A nice simple round trip workflow from Adobe Premiere to DaVinci Resolve and then back to Adobe Premiere again. I give you guys two different versions of how to do it. One is the long condensed clip version and the other is exporting an XML out of DaVinci so you can have those individual individual clips inside of Premiere, giving you the option to extend the handles and add more frames if you do want to make those adjustments. I will be doing more DaVinci tutorials in the future, I promise. I've been getting a lot of questions about this. People are really excited and really curious about DaVinci Resolve and it's still kind of new with all the editing capabilities and of course the color grading capabilities are super powerful. Really great program. I will be doing more and I urge you guys to download it because it is free and it is just absolutely incredible. Take my word for it. Just download it. Me, of course, I'm Naughty and Sands, and this, what you were just watching, is learn how to edit stuff. Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to my channel to never miss out on any videos ever, and also check out the last video that you missed. Either one of these options is good. I recommend clicking the subscribe button first, personally, and then checking out the last video that you missed. You know, put me on a binge. Just binge some edit stuff. I don't care. What do I care? You're just, just learning.